The thing I love about being a Cooper is you deal with wood, which is always different. There's different characteristics to every keg that I make are different. There's not two kegs that are the same. There's not two barrels that are the same. My name's Dave Kesselbaum. I'm the Cooper here at Elite Kegs and Coopering. My average day, I'd be busy doing barrels for the winery, shaving and refiring. And in the normal course of the year, I'd be making pork kegs for customers. All my kegs are from recycled wood and all my casks are from recycled wood. To make a keg would typically take about five hours and even a cask would take about the same amount of time. Even though it's smaller, it's just the same amount of work. They've been making barrels the same shape for years, thousands of years from the Egyptians. Um, it's probably the only product that's never changed over the years, the same shape. So whoever invented the barrel did it correctly the first time. The choice of timber is very important for the wineries uh, as it imparts a, a flavour that, that they're after with their wines. And the way we work the timber with fire and that will impart different flavours and smells that go into the wine. So the correct wood is very important. That's an American oak. They're, they're a French oak. They're all different. You can feel it just by the wood. American oak gives off a formic acid, which is like a crushed ant flavour. And a French oak will give off um, a cigar box smell and aroma. A winemaker could identify what type of oak has been used in that wine. But let's say you had 100,000 litres, you may put 5,000 litres in new barrels. You may put, say, 10,000 litres into the reshaved ones, and the rest you try and keep really fruity. You blend it all together. The wood wouldn't dominate the wine. This cooperage has been here at Glossop for about 15 years. We've also got another cooperage in Berry, and that was there from 1933. The Riverland, probably at the max, would have had about five or six coopers in the heydays. It's just down to one at the moment. I'm from a coopering family. I learnt from my grandfather and my father and my uncle. So I'm the third generation cooper for the Riverland. I probably will not pass the skills on to any, anyone else because I think the trade is slowly but surely dying out. I guess we'll always need some coopers, but they're getting limited. Um, the wine is choosing to go to wood chips and inner stays as it's easy for them and cheaper. Rather than filling up thousands of barrels, you can fill up one big tank, put the wood chips in, blend it up and remove it. It's a lot simpler process. Most unusual keg I've made is uh, it's called an inside out keg. Instead of the middle bellying out, it bellies in. Um, it's probably a one off. Won't be repeated. My other unusual kegs are oval kegs. Some people prefer them. Same thing, they're hard work. I'm proud of all of them because they've been done properly. And it's a gift for life. They will last forever if you maintain them properly. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to work with wood. Coopering is a dying art, but there will always be a place for some coopering. That's the finished keg. Thank <laughs> you.